So, the new entry in the Fast Saga, Fast and Furious 9, is releasing this week, and I have had a chance to see the film early. With all the crazy events and action in F9, there's a lot to unpack surrounding the plot, the ending, and potential sequels. To put it more simply, I'm going to be breaking down the plot and ending for Fast and Furious 9, giving you a rundown of what happened in this latest entry. This analysis will also contain spoilers, so if you do happen to be someone who hasn't seen the film yet, then I would recommend watching this video after you've seen it. But if you want to keep up to date on any of my future content on upcoming films in numerous genres, then don't forget to support this video by giving it a like rating, subscribing to the channel, and turning on your notifications. Also, feel free to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, and Instagram at Cortex Videos, which is all linked in the description below. But without further ado, let's dive into Fast and Furious 9 Explained. So, the latest movie in the Fast Saga begins with a flashback of Dom's father, Jack Toretto, out in the field, waiting to hit the track alongside Kenny Linder. In the 1989 flashback scene, Jack Toretto participates in the last car race of the season with his sons Dominic and Jacob Toretto in his pit crew. They help their father fix something under the car hood, and at this particular moment, Dom had warned his brother Jacob about a puddle of oil on the track, but his remarks seem to be ignored. Dom also argues with rival racer Kenny about his dirty tactics, and a mixture of the two results in a fateful accident. The race begins, and it is seen that Kenny Linda gets aggressive on the road after hearing the news that Toretto is getting promoted to the next season, while he isn't. In a moment of rage, Linda cuts Toretto from the back, making his car roll over the puddle of oil and crashing into a fence at full speed. The car combusts and Jack Toretto dies, leaving Dom helplessly trying to save his father, but he is dragged away by Buddy, his team member. Fast forward to present day, and Dominic Toretto looks forward to leading a peaceful life with Letty and their son Brian in the countryside. However, the main plot is about to kick into gear because Roman Pierce, Ted Parker, and Ramsey visit the family to confront them with some news. They reveal that they had caught a distress signal from the series returner Mr. Nobody, who refers to a valuable cargo. What is worrisome about this incident was that the plane from which the signal was sent had previously carried Cypher and helped her escape before, presumably crashing somewhere in the northwestern part of Monte Quinto. The team collectively decides to find Mr. Nobody, but Dom refuses to go with them, explaining that he doesn't want their son to be affected, and opting for a quieter family future. We get an essence of this when the team previously arrived, as Dom made his son hide, and he set up a defense, just in case. Letty, on the other hand, reveals that she's done with the quiet life and is seeking adventure, thereby implying that she's joining the team. The team leaves for the mission as Dom stays at home with his son, but once he decides to watch the video footage once again, he notices Toretto's family cross on the neck of the attacker, and realises that the attacker could be his younger brother, Jacob. As a result, he has no choice but to go down to the Middle East too. The team arrives at the crash site in Monte Quinto and discover the plane, but as they scavenge through it, they realise that Mr. Nobody is nowhere to be found. Searching the plane, they find part of a device named Ares, which can hack into any computer weapon system, but at this time they are attacked by a private army and Jacob, who notices that Letty has dropped an item that belongs to the team and steals it. Upon realising the matter at hand, the team chase after him, but to no avail. This whole sequence began a plethora of over-the-top action that although to some may be fun, I found it really took me out of the story and character motivations that was set up well in the opening flashback scene. Dom and Letty survive a ridiculous cliff jump, Jacob's car gets caught by a plane with a magnet, and these are just a few of the examples, and overall, I wish it would have been a little more grounded. 
But coming back to the plot, the item that was stolen is revealed to be one of two components of Project Ares. Since it is now under Jacob's possession, Cypher breaks into the system of Mr. Nobody's agency and finds out the location of the second component, which is in the city of Edinburgh. We are introduced here to Otto, a rich villain who is the main funding for the project, and alongside this plot, another flashback emerges and finally answers all questions about Dom's relationship with his younger brother, revealing that when Dom finds out that his brother accidentally killed their father, he punishes Jacob by kicking him out of the family. Their relationship then functions on mutual hatred, thus revealing why Jacob came into the picture as an enemy after so long. This comes after a sequence in 1989, where after the crash, Linda has an altercation with Dom, who nearly beats him to death and gets arrested as Jacob watches. When he comes back, he races Jacob, wins and tells him to drive and never come back. To follow Jacob and get the item from him, Dom sets up a meeting with Buddy, the friend of the Toretto family who held him back in the opening scene and he gives him a lead that Jacob might be in London. He also expresses that he hopes for the brothers to reunite and make peace with history. And as every film under the Fast and Furious franchise goes, this movie too rides high on brotherhood and reignites the lost relationship. It's probably the best part of the film and it could have been explored more, but I'll save that discussion for a review video later in the week. But Dom is soon reluctantly joined by Mia Toretto, who wishes to help. The team learns in this time that Han is alive and working with Mr. Nobody, resulting in them all splitting up, with Letty and Mia searching for Han in Tokyo. They encounter him and his ward Ellie with much to reveal here later on in the plot. While this happens, Roman and Ted recruit Sean, Twinkie and Earl Hu, some familiars from Tokyo Drift, who have been working on a rocket car. Roman and Ted devise a plan to use the rocket car and go to space to destroy the satellite link of Project Ares. In London, Dom also meets Helen Mirren's Queenie Shaw, who gives him Jacob's location, leading to a confrontation with him alongside Otto, who tells Dom to leave. Otto has Dom arrested, but Laser, played by Cardi B, acts an old friend of Dom who helps him escape. It's a weird scene to watch and like previous movies, cameo roles don't work very well, especially with Cardi B not being the greatest at acting. But soon after, the team begin to join back up, with Ted, Roman and Ramsey joining Dom in Edinburgh, where Jacob is using an electromagnetic field to steal the second Ares device. Ted and Roman find the truck containing the electromagnet as they fight Otto's men, and Ramsey controls the truck to chase after Otto. Dom intercepts Jacob and the two fight throughout the city. Before Otto can extract Jacob, Ramsey runs his car off the road and Dom uses the electromagnet to capture Jacob. Otto returns to his base and resultingly recruits Cypher, who plots a last minute plan, and back at the safe house, we learn more about Han's return and how it links into the events unfolding. Han reveals that he was assigned by Mr. Nobody to protect Ellie and Ares, as Ellie's DNA is its final component. When one of Mr. Nobody's agents went rogue, they used Deckard Shaw to fake Han's death for him to protect Ellie. However, this reveal is soon interrupted when Otto attacks the safe house and frees Jacob, who had been Mr. Nobody's rogue agent. Jacob reveals that in 1989, Jack had been in massive debt and was planning to fake his death to escape it. He had Jacob tamper with his car, but the plan went wrong, causing the car to explode. Setting up the final sequence, Jacob and Otto kidnap Ellie and take the second Ares device. Everything now begins to come together as Otto launches a satellite into orbit while Jacob has Ellie activate Ares. They begin uploading Ares to the satellite, moving throughout Tbilisi in an armoured truck and Dom, Letty, Mia, Ramsey and Han give chase to rescue Ellie and stop the upload. As Mia and Han try to breach the truck, Jacob is betrayed by Otto and thrown off with Dom and Mia saving him, leading to his escape. 
Jacob uses Mia's car to get away, but after reconsideration, he soon returns to help Dom enter the armoured truck. They gain control, get out and flip the truck using Dom and Jacob's car, resulting in a pretty epic, but once again, over the top moment. Meanwhile, as everything goes down on the highway, Tedge and Roman use the rocket car to enter orbit and destroy the satellite before Ares can be uploaded. It's weird seeing this as it's been a running joke that Fast and Furious would eventually go to space, and crazily they do that here. But after they've stopped the device, the last ditch attack by Cypher is about to take place, and it's pretty underwhelming. Cypher remotely pilots a jet to bomb the truck, attempting to kill Dom, but completely fails, killing Otto instead. The truck ricochets into Cypher's plane, destroying it, and because she's piloting it from a remote location, Cypher escapes alive. I guess we will see her continue to be one of the main villains in the last two movies, alongside a certain character from the post credit scene, but we'll get to that in a second. But after the main battle, Mia reconciles with Jacob and Dom allows his brother to escape in his 1970 Dodge Charger 500. Like I suggested, the relationship between Dom and Jacob is probably the best part of this film and although there were some questionable moments with their motivations, I think it's still one of the stronger parts. But following Dom and Jacob making peace, Toretto and his son arrive at the racing track where Dom's father had died in the flashback, bidding him a final goodbye. It's a nice callback and one that gets to the heart of the Toretto name, again being a better element of the film. The closing moments also include what we get in every Fast and Furious movie, having the team, or family as Dom puts it, celebrate their success with a barbecue. While preparing to say grace, Brian's car arrives in the driveway, and like the previous films, it's a nice callback for the character, joining the table where he always belonged. But Fast 9 has a post credit sequence, and we begin to see where the saga could go in the next films, with a return of a fan favourite character. Even though we believed we wouldn't see Deckard Shaw again until Fast and Furious 10, Jason Statham makes his return to the main franchise in the credit scene. Shaw is seemingly just training away on a punch bag, but there's actually an unlucky person inside of it. He pleads to be let go in return for some plans on a drive, unaware that Shaw already has them and is just beating him up to stay in shape. Fortunately for his punch bag victim, Shaw's workout is interrupted by a knock on the door and when he goes to open it, he comes face to face with Han. Unsurprisingly, Shaw seems a bit shocked to see somebody he thought he killed, but that's as much as we get before it cuts to black. So it absolutely will be something Fast and Furious fans will want to see in the next movie, as they've been calling for justice for Han since Shaw's turn in Fast and Furious 8, and now Han's alive again, they could have their wish. Director Justin Lim will return for the epic two movie finale to this Fast and Furious story, and since he's spoken out about how Shaw and Dwayne Johnson's Hobbs are a part of this saga, we would expect to see them return at some point in those movies. We'll have to see, but with there being some underwhelming aspects to this latest film, the post credit scene does offer up some interesting ideas that could be explored with Deckard Shaw and Han. But that was my video explaining the plot and ending for Fast and Furious 9. I hope this did help some of you guys put together the events a bit better, and I'm looking forward to hearing what else you picked out in the film, so don't forget to let me know down below in the comment section. I will most likely be doing a review video for Fast 9 later this week too, so keep a lookout for whenever I post. For more breakdown videos on other upcoming films, then subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. Also, if you enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like rating and follow me on social media via the links in the description. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I've been Cortex and as always, make some noise.